Hello and welcome to today's lecture on helical antenna. In fact, in the last few lectures we have been talking about helical antenna and in the last lecture we saw in detail how to design axial mode helical antenna and we saw that how to feed the axial mode helical antenna. Then we also saw how we can feed the arrays of the helical antenna and how a larger gain helical antenna can be designed either using a single element or we can use multiple arrays of that. Then we also looked at the parasitic effect of the helical antenna and we saw something very interesting that is a linearly polarized antenna can be converted to circularly polarized antenna by using helical antenna in the axial mode. So, today let us talk about normal mode helical antenna. In fact, normal mode helical antenna has been a uh, very important of late especially in the beginning when the mobile phones were launched. These mobile phones actually had a monopole antenna at let us say 900 megahertz the height of the monopole antenna will be lambda by 4 approximately. So, if lambda is about 33 centimeter it will be about 8 to 9 centimeter and on the mobile phone if you put this thing here it was not very convenient. Then later on people started redesigning the mobile phone and what they did they actually made a cavity in that and this uh, 8 to 9 centimeter will go inside that. However, that was the point when the normal mode helical antenna came and so what they did instead of having a monopole of 9 centimeter height, what they actually did they took a wire around uh, this one here and wrapped it around and the total height was reduced to about 2 centimeter. So, basic purpose of that was that you use a smaller height helical antenna to realize the concept of the monopole antenna. So, how monopole antenna radiates that was the purpose that you now have a compact monopole antenna you can say or normal mode helical antenna. So, let us see today in detail what is a normal mode helical antenna and what is the first simple theory about normal mode helical antenna and then we will look at the design of the normal mode helical antenna. So, let us look at the normal mode helical antenna. So, here what we have uh, there is a helical antenna okay, and that is being fed you can see here, here it is being fed directly, but we will show you a different way of feeding this particular normal mode helical antenna. Now, the condition which is there is that the diameter of this should be much, much lesser than lambda or in reality circumference should be much less than lambda and circumference is equal to pi times d. So, d has to be much smaller than the wavelength and here we can actually see the approximation of this as this here where what one can see that from here to here that is being approximated by let us say a linear wire and then this part is approximated to a loop then a linear wire, then approximated to a loop, then another linear wire approximated to loop and we can actually see what is the spacing between the each turn which is given by S here. And then we can now apply the concept of the small dipole. So, for this particular thing here we can actually consider that this as the part of the small dipole and for that we already know what would be the radiation pattern in this particular case. You can see that this is about sin theta. So, theta is equal to 0 in this. So, that means there will be a 0 radiation here and for theta equal to 90 which is over here sin theta will be maximum. So, that will be like a dipole kind of a pattern maximum here and minimum here. Then all these loop they can be thought about n turn loop antenna. So, for loop for a small loop we know what is the E phi you can see there is a difference this is E theta this is E phi because for loop what we consider a loop antenna to be a magnetic dipole. So, for electric dipole for this portion this is electric dipole this will be H field, okay. but for loop we consider this to be a magnetic dipole then this will be E field. So, E theta E phi change otherwise you can see that the pattern part here is same 
same sin theta, sin theta coming over here, which is true for small dipole and small loop. Now, if you take the ratio of these two, which generally will give rise to axial ratio. Now, why axial ratio? Because one can actually think about that for the linear, this is in this plane and for loop, it is in this plane. So, we can say that the two field are orthogonal to each other. So, we can actually take the magnitude of these two ratio. So, if we take the ratio here, we can actually see majority of the components get cancelled and what we left with is some of these term here as d is written in the form of c, c is equal to pi d. One can see that there is a pi here which comes into picture. So, then if we take the ratio, so that would be a actual ratio. Now, here uh, in fact, one can get a circular polarization provided we take c lambda equal to 2 s lambda. If this is equal to this, then axial ratio will be equal to 1. So, from here we can get this condition for axial ratio. However, earlier no antenna was designed for circularly polarized performance. Most of the helical antennas earlier were designed basically to replace a long monopole antenna with a compact helical antenna. So, for that particular case to happen, axial ratio should be theoretically infinity because linear polarized antenna should have an infinite axial ratio. However, practically anything better than 20 or 30 dB is a good linearly polarized antenna. However, this particular normal mode helical antenna actually has a lot of advantages when we want to use it for let us say mobile phone. The reason for that is let us say this component here, the linear component will give us E field and this loop component will give us the orthogonal parameter over here. So, if we even design this particular antenna for let us say axial ratio equal to say 10 dB or 5 dB or even 20 dB, it is still better than a linearly polarized antenna. The reason for that is for mobile application, especially suppose when you are indoor. In the indoor, there will be lot of multiple reflections coming from the wall. So, any linearly polarized antenna, suppose that signal which is coming up after multiple reflections from various wall or from other object, it will also have you can say instead of this vertical here, it may become angular and then it will have both vertical as well as horizontal component. So, in that case, a helical antenna operating in a normal mode is better because now it can not only receive the linearly polarized waveform which can be vertical, but it can also get the other waveform which is horizontally polarized. So, of course, something is better than nothing. A linearly polarized antenna will only receive linearly polarized. Suppose, if the angle is perpendicular, then the received power will be almost negligible. So, sometimes helical antennas are preferable one. However, off late there is a lot of research going on where people want a monopole kind of an antenna, but with circular polarization. So, this concept of the normal mode helical antenna can be utilized very properly to design circularly polarized monopole antenna. So, let us just look at this thing one more time. So, here is the condition which needs to be satisfied. So, what it really means that C lambda here, whatever is the value that is the square of this, if you take it equal to this and choose things appropriately, one can actually get an actual ratio close to 1. So, it is if one uses this concept, it becomes easier to design circular polarization and it is actually a very good research topic currently going on. So, if you just work on this, do the simulation, do some fabrication, you will be able to publish some papers also. So, let us just see now the some example which are given. So, this example I have taken it from the cross book who is the original inventor of the helical antenna, but I will just mention to you where I do not agree with this particular example here and where I agree. So, let us just start with this here. 
So what they have given that design? They have given that design for infinite ground plane. And they have assumed that the wire length should be approximately equal to lambda by 4. I have written that, that is given in the textbook. But in reality, it should always be greater than lambda by 4. So, but let us just go first with this particular example and then I will tell you what corrections need to be done or what modifications need to be done. So, let us start with this here lambda by 4 length. So, basically now if you see the helical antenna, one end is shorted with respect to the ground plane and the other end is open circuit here and this entire wire length is approximately equal to 0 0.25 lambda. So, let us see now how we do the next step here. So, here in general we know that the C would be much lesser than lambda. So, here C lambda has been chosen as 0 0.04 and if C lambda is 0 0.04 then what will be D lambda? That will be this divided by pi. So, if you divide this by pi, D lambda is approximately 0 0.013. Then alpha has been chosen as 14 degree. So, once alpha is known, we can calculate S lambda. S lambda will be C lambda multiplied by tan alpha. Now, again I want to mention here, it is not necessary that you choose alpha equal to 14 degree. This condition is more appropriate for axial mode helical antenna where alpha should be 12 to 14 degree. For normal mode helical antenna, there is no such condition or restriction that you should take alpha equal to 14 degree, you can take any different angle also. But for this value of alpha taken, S lambda comes out to be 0 0.01 and then we wanted the total length to be equal to lambda by 4. So, one can actually see what, so here then we need to take this total wire length to be equal to 0.25 lambda. Again, that is a textbook thing, not what I believe in, but nevertheless, so let us complete this part here. So, this is equal to lambda by 4. So, now what C lambda is known, now S lambda is calculated and if we now calculate L lambda, L lambda will be nothing but S lambda square plus C lambda square. So, that will be slightly more than 0.04 and that multiplied by 6 will give us a value of 0 0.25 lambda. So, that is how the design has been given here. Now, why this is being shorted here, why it is not being directly fed? The reason for that is that if we feed it directly, it will give us a very low impedance. So, if we feed it directly here, it will actually give us a very low impedance. The reason for that is if we just think about this as a uh, let us say a monopole antenna of certain height here, then we can actually calculate what will be the radiation resistance. Earlier we had used the symbol RR, it is the same thing at RR or here it is written as RS. So, radiation resistance is actually calculated by using the concept of the same, uh, you can say that dipole antenna with the half of that which is a monopole antenna and I average has been taken and that gives us a radiation resistance of only 0 0.6 ohm. And if we try to feed this thing directly with the 50 ohm line, that would have a real big mismatch, most of the power will get reflected back. So, to avoid that particular problem, they had proposed this particular concept here. So, if this helical antenna is shorted at this point here with the ground, that means input impedance will be 0 here. And if you look at the open end over here, input impedance will be very high. So, assuming that is approximately, since the free space impedance is about 377 ohm, so assuming that is roughly about 377. So, 377, if you divide that by roughly 6, so after about one turn, that gives us roughly close to about 50 ohm impedance. So, how it is being fed? So, this is shorted here, take it coaxial connector extend it and then connect at this particular point and that would give us a relatively a decent matching for this particular antenna. And for this particular antenna design, axial ratio can be calculated. 
which is given by 2 s lambda by c lambda square. So, 2 into s lambda is 0 0.01, c lambda is 0 0.04 square and if we see that number is 12.5 and for axial ratio, we should take 20 log of this. So, 20 log of this is about 21.94 dB, which is a fairly decent uh, axial ratio for linearly polarized antenna and one can see that the feed has been tapped after one turn of impedance matching. Now, based on this particular concept, we actually made uh, antenna also almost you can say close to two decades back. So, what we did, we actually took designed a normal mode helical ara antenna around uh, 100 megahertz. So, at 100 megahertz wavelength is about 3 meter or so and what we had done we actually took a, a badminton shuttle, I used to play badminton those days. So, the cover of that which is a hollow cylinder. So, we put that over here and then we put the wires something like this over here. Now, what we notice we did exactly the same thing as reported in this particular book and we use the tap over here also. So, what we realize that the impedance was decently matched, we still got very close to 50 ohm, but the resonance frequency was shifted considerably and in fact, then we did multiple things also. So, we actually stretched the wire straight way, then we could get the frequency for which we had designed it and we had taken for this experiment fairly large ground plane. So, which can replace you can say or assume that it is infinite ground plane. But then we realized that because helical antenna is known as slow wave structure. So, if it is a slow wave structure, then how can this length be only equal to lambda by 4? So, this length must always be greater than lambda by 4, okay? it cannot be equal to lambda by 4. If you choose like this here, your resonance frequency will always be off. So, then the question comes then how much we should take it. So, if this is 0.25 lambda, I generally recommend this to be between 0.3 lambda to 0.4 lambda. Now, again you may say that is a lot of difference that also depends upon what is the pitch angle you use. Okay? So, if you use smaller pitch angle that means, if s lambda is small in that case this length should be close to 0 0.4 lambda. If you take a larger pitch angle, then this can be close to 0 0.3 lambda. And nevertheless, so you make this and take always I recommend take slightly larger length than desired value and then do the measurement using let us say vector network analyzer or something and see what is the frequency you are getting. And if you take a larger length than this, then frequency will always be lower. So, you can just cut that little bit and you can use the concept which I have been telling always that when you have made one antenna, you need to make another antenna. All you do it is use the concept of F 1 L 1 equal to F 2 L 2. So, if you take a little larger length, then frequency will be little smaller. So, now you know how much reduction in the frequency is there and then you take F 2 which is the desired one, calculate the value of L 2 and you cut that much and that way you will be able to design this antenna in a very decent manner. Okay? And the tap can always be adjusted little bit up here and there to do the impedance matching. So, suppose you put a tap over here, let us say that you got an impedance of say 45 ohm, then all you need to do it is you take the tap little bit higher because impedance will be higher over here. Or suppose you have measured the impedance to be let us say 60 ohm, then in that case you go little lower and then do the tapping and that because this will be higher impedance, this is the lowest impedance. So, if you have measured higher impedance, take little lower value. If it is measured lower impedance, go little up here. So, little bit of a tuning is required. Of course, all these things are I am mentioning when you are doing straight away experimental work, but these days we have very sophisticated tools are there. So, for example, you can use IE3D, you can use microwave studio, you can use HFSS and so on and by using that software, you can do the optimization much better and in that case, 
your experimental iterations will reduce significantly. Now, this is the situation when we have a larger ground plane, but in reality majority of the time ground plane size may be very, very small. So, for very small ground plane, I want to tell you something very different, unique and uh, that also we did it experimentally first and then we came out with some theoretical explanation. So, let us see uh, the concept of helical antenna on very small circular ground plane. Okay. So, here you can see that this is a circular ground plane and you can actually see it is very small, it is even smaller than the diameter of the helix here. In fact, this actually has a lot of practical application because many a times we actually have a very small antenna and in fact, I just want to tell you that this is you can see here SMA connector is there and then that SMA connector there is a helix wand around this particular thing here. Of course, diameter should be very, very small compared to the wavelength. We know that height will be governed by how much the spacing we have taken, how many number of turns we have taken. And over here now, since the ground plane is very small, so you actually need to visualize this whole thing first in the form of the let us say dipole antenna. So, just imagine a dipole antenna first. So, let us say this is a dipole antenna. So, in the case of dipole antenna, we know that this length should be approximately equal to lambda by 2. And then we talked about monopole antenna. So, for monopole antenna, we knew that the height will reduce by half that should height be about lambda by 4 for infinite ground plane. But we had seen for monopole antenna that if you take the ground plane size very small and if you feed from here, the input impedance of this increases. And also we had seen that for a very small ground plane for a monopole, the frequency was changing drastically. And for very small ground plane, this height was not taken as 0.25 lambda it almost became close to 0.4 lambda also if the ground plane size is very small. Now, these things I have already mentioned when we talked about monopole antenna, you can read that again. So, now the same dipole antenna coming back here. So, if you think about this as a dipole antenna, so this is an open current here, open current here. So, input impedance will be very high. So, now you can think about a monopole antenna with a very small ground plane as a end fed dipole antenna and the length here is not really lambda by 2 for dipole, but because of the small ground plane this length is about 0.4 to 0.45 lambda also. And then we saw that impedance was very high here. Exactly the same concept has been used to design normal mode helical antenna for small ground plane. So, all the other things remain same. Again, we have a C which is equal to pi d. This is the spacing between each turn and this will is the length of the one turn. The total length will be n times this particular length here and total height will be nothing but n turn multiplied by s over here. Now, for normal mode helical antenna, the diameter of the wire plays very, very important role. Whereas, this particular thing has not been considered even in the textbooks, where they just mentioned that the total length should be equal to a lambda by 4. We will actually see one by one the effect of all these parameters. So, our starting point was, we actually took that as a challenge that this is a normal mode helical antenna designed on very small ground plane. And even though I am telling about this design here for 1.8 gigahertz, but I just want to mention that the beginning did not happen like this. The beginning actually happened, there was a requirement at 433 megahertz. And 433 megahertz, we did the calculation. So, at 433 megahertz, lambda by 4 length is about 17 centimeter. So, I knew by that time that one should not take lambda by 4 distance. So, what I took, I just took a very long wire and then I needed to wrap that around. So, what I did, I just took out 
a ball pen, took out the refill of that and I just took a wire and put it around there. And then we actually used that SMA connector and even though I had thought that I will use the tap, but I just connected it like this at that time and we took the wire and suddenly we noticed that the impedance was coming very close to 50 ohm. And then we even uh, used some touching things, so we touched the ground plane side, we actually tried to make it little larger ground plane by putting some other metallic copper thing and all that and we could see that the impedance was varying quite a lot. So anyway at that time I just designed 433 megahertz only using experimental technique, no theoretical, no simulation, nothing. So simply the, the refill of the pen worked as the supporting thing, we took the wire, thin wire, round it, put it around, put a cello tape on that, connected with the network analyzer and using my concept of F1, L1 equal to F2, L2. So we did the measurement and then cut the wire little bit and we got perfect match with 433 ohm. So it was much later we decided that why not we study this thing very carefully and see how this performance is varying, what are the effects of various parameters and especially now that we have very good software simulation tool. So why not we simulate these things and come out with a decent concept, how it works, why it works, what are the parameters, how things are radiating, how matching is done, what is the effect of the various parameters. So all these things we will see in the next lecture. So just to conclude today's lecture, so today we discuss about a normal mode helical antenna. For infinite ground plane, even though the textbook says the wire length should be equal to lambda by 4, which is 0 0.25 lambda, but our experience is that you must take always larger than that, the wire length should be at least between 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 lambda, because if you choose that, then you can get a decent matching. And in that case, we also saw that you can use the tapping for impedance matching and it works very nicely. And then we started looking into the concept of very small ground plane and where we can feed the antenna directly, no tapping is required. So all these things we will see in the next lecture in much more detail. So till then, bye, we will see you next time.